Now, for most of us, waiting is hard, right? Raise your hand if you have a hard time waiting. I know I do. I don't like to wait. I don't like to wait in traffic, which is why this is a very bad time of year for me. Like on Thursday or Friday, I pulled out of here and both sides were completely backed up. It's like, maybe I won't go anywhere. Don't like waiting in traffic. Don't like waiting at appointments. I don't like waiting in line. I don't even like waiting for water to boil, which is why I'm not a, a cook. Waiting is not one of my strong suits, and yet in Scripture, waiting is such a good and important thing. Isaiah 40 says, Even young people grow faint and weary, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Scripture calls us to wait for the Lord, which is exactly what Simeon does. And as John Orberg points out, we are all waiting for something. All of us. Maybe you're waiting for somebody to love, for a romantic relationship. Or maybe you're waiting for clarity about your life's direction. Maybe you're waiting for a job to be able to, to support your family or for your finances to bounce back. Maybe you're waiting for a wandering child to come back home. Maybe you're waiting for your deep anxiety to go away or for love to heal a marriage that's broken. We are all waiting for something. And when we look at Simeon, we realize that the big question isn't, will I get everything I'm waiting for? Because in this life, in this world, we won't. This world, this life is incomplete until God's kingdom comes fully. The big question is, what kind of person am I becoming while I wait? Am I growing in hope? Am I growing in love? Am I growing in expectation? Am I growing in worship and prayer? Or am I becoming self-protective or bitter? Am I waiting patiently for the Lord? Or am I giving up? We don't know how long Simeon waited, but what if he had given up? What if he had said, who am I kidding? We have been waiting way too long for the Messiah. I'm, I'm making a fool of myself. It's not worth it, this waiting, this hoping. I'm out of here. What if he had done that? What if he had given up? He would have missed the moment for which he was created. For he would have missed the one for whom he was created. But Simeon doesn't give up. As he grows older, he continues to put his hope in God. And as a result, his final years become his best years. Dr. Paul Brand was a medical doctor who wrote a best-selling book with Philip Yancey called Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. Dr. Brand was once invited to speak at the dedication of a retirement home where he had just become a new resident. And at that ceremony, he spoke these words. I remember well when I was at my physical peak. I was 27 years old and had just finished medical school. A group of friends and I were mountain climbing, and we could climb for hours. For some people, when they cross that peak, for them, life is over. I remember well my mental peak, too. I was 57 years of age and was performing groundbreaking hand surgery. All of my medical training was coming together in one place. For some people, when they cross that peak, for them, life is over. I'm now over 80 years of age. I recently realized that I'm approaching another peak, my spiritual peak. All I have sought to become as a person has the opportunity to come together in wisdom, maturity, kindness, love, joy, and peace. And I realize when I cross that peak, for me, life will not be over. It will have just begun. See, Dr. Brand reminds me of Simeon. Although he is old in age, he is still peaking, still growing, still looking forward, still waiting on God. 
And as he does, he meets Jesus and discovers that Jesus is worth the wait. See, when Mary and Joseph bring Jesus into the temple, this little six-week-old infant, Simeon takes him in his arms and praises God, declaring, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. God, now that I've met Jesus, now that I've seen him face to face, I can die in peace. My heart is full. My thirst is quenched. He's the one. The one I've been looking for. The one I've been dreaming of. Have you ever heard someone say, I was made for this? I think that's a, such a significant statement when people say that. I was made for this. If there's anything on our bucket list, wouldn't we want it to be the thing we were made for? That's who Jesus is. In Jesus Christ, we find the one we were made for. In Jesus Christ, we find the one we've been looking for all along. E. Stanley Jones was a, a famous Methodist missionary to India. He once said these striking words, We are made for Christ as the duck is made for water, as the bird is made for air, as the heart is made for love. When you find Christ, you find yourself, your homeland. Man, that's a quote I've thought a lot about. It strikes me every time I hear it. We are made for Christ. He is the one we've been looking for, the one we've been dreaming of all along, even when we don't realize it. Now, how many of you have seen the movie 50 First Dates? All right, some of you. It's filmed here in Hawaii, right? And um, it's about an artist named Lucy, played by Drew Barrymore, and this guy named Henry, who's played by Adam Sandler. They, those two are in like 80 movies together. Um, but Lucy... Uh, has short-term memory loss so that every night when she sleeps, all her memory of the day before is erased. Um, so when she and Henry meet, they hit it off, but the next day she has no idea who he is. So every day Henry has to start over getting to know Lucy, developing this relationship over and over again. Now Lucy keeps a notebook in which, she re in which she writes down everything she's experienced, and by this notebook, she's able to remember who Henry is. But eventually, she feels like she's holding him back, and she grabs the notebook, everything that's about Henry in it, and she throws it away. And she pretty much tells Henry, hey, we're done. We're through. Now, she then moves into this institution, and Henry realizes, I've got to get out of town, away from Hawaii, because it's just too painful to see her when she doesn't know who I am. And just as he's getting on the ship, about to leave the island, he realizes, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think she does know who I am. I think there is a way that she does remember me. And so he rushes back to see her. He runs into the, the home, the institution where she's staying, calling out her name. And finally, he finds her. And that's where we're going to pick up this clip. We're going to watch right when, after that happens. I want to show you something. Will you come with me? Oh, yeah. Hey, do you know who that guy is? Dude, I don't even know who I am. Oh, well, you're Pablo Picasso. Really? No, not really. This is my studio. Wow. almost every night. Why? Well, I 
What'd you say if I told you that notebook you read every day used to have a lot of stuff about me in it? I would say that that makes a lot of sense. You erased me from your memories because you thought you were holding me back from having a full and happy life. But you made a mistake. Being with you is the only way I could have a full and happy life. You're the girl of my dreams. And apparently I'm the man of yours. Henry, it's nice to meet you. Lucy, it's nice to meet you too. Now, I know this is a, it's a romantic comedy, Adam Sandler, but I still remember the first time I saw that scene, and right away it struck me. When Lucy meets Henry, it's a lot like when we meet Jesus. See, what if we have spiritual amnesia? What if we've forgotten the one who loves us the most but what if we can't forget him completely because we were created for him? What if when we finally meet him, our life begins to make sense? What if even though we've never met Jesus, he's the one we dream of? What if there's a room in our soul with his picture on all the walls? What if he belongs at the top of our bucket list because he's the one we are made for. You and I are made for Jesus. Our ultimate purpose in life is a person. Not just any person, but the one who made us and sustains us and loves us and desires to spend eternity with us. So if you've never done so, I want to invite you to put Jesus on your bucket list. Before I die, I want to meet Jesus. Before I die, I want to meet Jesus and follow him and get to know him and become like him and live for him so that when I die, I fall into his arms so that when I die, life will not be over but will have just begun. Amen.